Hi, I'm the Lone Journalist for KRAZ TV. This is going to be a book review for the adult side at the Zero Channel because it involves Nazis and we might want to say the word bastards. Well, it's called Monuments Man. Yeah, yeah, they really said that they should have called it Monuments Men and Women, but the actual Monuments Man was uh, James J. Rorimer. The mission to save Vermeer's, Rembrandt's, Da Vinci's, and more from the Nazis' grasp by James J. Rorimer. I, uh, it's really about a fine art specialist from the Museum of Art and all of these other people and people that were in France at the Louvre and, and places like that that were already in the field. So when they joined the military uh, or the army or whatever, they were uh, utilized to catalog and and get back all the the paintings and art and statues and everything, all the fine art of the world that the bastards stole during. They were just thugs, criminals, and killers. They had no other ideals. They said they did, but they lied because that's what they do. Anyways, enough of the rant. It is... Uh, let's see, who put this book out? Rizzoli Electa. Rizzoli Electa, I guess, is the book manufacturer. Forward by Lynn Nichols. Uh, a lot of photographs. And almost everything in here is, is photographs. James R. Rorimer, former director of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, became a leading figure in the art recovery unit known as Monuments Men, an elite group in the United States Army who risked their lives during World War II to save Europe's greatest artworks from Hitler's grasp. In the movie, Monuments Men, Matt Damon's character is based on Rorimer as he embarks on the world's most dangerous real life treasure hunt. This is the real Rorimer's first hand account tracing his trips troop his journey with Allied troops across France and Germany on a trail of Nazi stolen masterpieces of art with the goal of locating, seizing, and returning the works to their original holders, including museums, galleries, and private collectors. The new edition of a book first published in 1950 includes many of the original illustrations from the first edition, as well as additional imagery and ephemera uncovered during extensive research, including photographs taken by Rorimer during the war, and accompanied by reproductions of a selection of the artworks Rorimer helped save by such artists as Rembrandt, Leonardo da Vinci, Bruegel, Vermeer, Goya, Velasquez, and Van Eyck, among many others. Maps created especially for this volume, as well as facts about World War II history, and geography abound, adding new dimensions to this remarkable story of courage, perseverance, and ultimately triumph. It's a book that needs to be told. It's very concise. Uh, like I said, though, they had to really add a lot more to it. But there's a picture of a guy in a salt mine. So the Germans took all the uh, paintings, and Goering was the biggest thief of all, and he had a private collection, and then there was one time when he had more train loads, 20 or so car loads taken out, and Hitler only had 19. So he, he would get a hold of Hitler every day. Hey, how about this? You want this? How about that? And, you know, and they're just 
freaking thieves. So they uh, cataloged everything and then they took it to Castles. Uh, let's see, there's basic training, Normandy, where they went. Uh, Paris Monument Officer, Paris and, and Castle, Art Underground, Rosenberg Repository, Bert's, Bertolt's Garden, The Gehring Story, Restitution, uh, Education Begins at Home. So those are some of the chapters. So, I mean, there's... Here's uh, Eisenhower look, looking at, at paintings under, you know, salt mine. Yeah, the Merker, Merker's mine on April the 12th. So they got right in there right after, uh, once Hitler committed suicide, that was it. So, a lot of the people, they said there was a, approximately 15 daily, everyday experts, but there were 350 people attached to the unit that uh, did the work. Uh, some of the women uh, were uh, uh, curators and very brave too. I think her name was, well, I should have uh, bookmarked some of this. They have some of the before and after, how they were damaged and then the restoration today. So it's got full of color, color plates and historical uh, photographs. And it's mostly photographs. But there's a special Bayaux uh, tapestry, some of this invaluable painting, uh, Monet's, Claude Monet's, gold. Uh, it's just amazing. There's Rommel. I don't know what he did. I guess he stayed at the Chateau La Roche Guyon. That was his headquarters. Before he was forced out by generals and forced to kill himself too. Because they were jealous of him. So there's pictures of some of the chateaus and that have now been turned into repositories. Some of the old pictures of chateaus. It's just amazing. And there's Hitler and Goering. Uh, Hitler's presenting him with uh, the falconer to Goering for his birthday present. And that's him. And this rear picture, a soldier believed to be uh, Corporal Donald Ornitz, later photographed ph photographer of celebrities, views wooden path, wooded path in late fall by Olaf August Andreas Yernberg, which was hidden in. Geyser Road salt mine near Merkers. Oh, I just see they they were in salt mines. I guess that probably helped save them. But there was a lot of uh, water damage and and things like that. So they even had a, a German restorer on some of them. But look at the gold pieces of, of fine work they were. It was just phenomenal. So they go show a lot of color plates of the before, because they were all in black and white back then in the 40s. And then they show the restoration or the uh, pictures today. So there's New, New Schwanstein Castle. That's that famous castle. It was Jack, Chucky Jam packed full. So the three women, look at the chandeliers and stuff, amazing. Oh, it's just amazing story. So it was down towards Austria in that area in Switzerland in the southern part of Munich and all that. They said that really the the art theft came from Munich because that's where Goering and uh, Goering and all of those. Mussolini was in on some of that too. They show him. Oh, it's just a, a horrendous story. It's just horrendous. Edith 
A. Standen was one of the women. Wow. Uh, there's Rorir. Roramer that's being decorated. Let me see if I can see some of these. Well, there he is as the later after the war, he was a director of the MoMA, I guess, Museum of, of, of Metropolitan Art. Oh. Matt Damon, of course, well. Uh, Blanchett's role was based on Rose, Rose Valliard, Valand, I mean, Rose Valand. She's the one that kept a lot of stuff from, uh, because she had worked in the gallery, in the Louvre and all that, she actually had the resistance help her hide stuff. So she was, she was already on a death, uh, journey already if she'd been caught that was it for her she was she was dead so it's an amazing amazing story there's so many photo credits at the back that it's just so numerous the index and it's just well like they say it's it's a more improved version let's see rose well on Edith Stanton. There's one other woman. I've got to find her. Uh, it, it's just amazing, amazing story. I just, I'm shocked by what really did happen in all those years, you know. But it could happen again, couldn't it? We hope not. Praise God that we hope it did not. Okay. Rose Vallon, her reluctance to share her research of German looting because she made a lot of notes as things got went out of there. And so... Uh, she risked her life many times over as a member of the resistance to secure information. So when she took it down, she was, uh, she didn't even want to tell the French or anything, but half of the French were collaborators in the Vichy. So, uh, and then when the Americans come, they said, well, just give us the data. We'll go tell them. No, uh, -uh. no, I'm going to watch this project all the way through. So, uh. Well, she knew what she was doing. So, it's just the, the pricelessness, the, the awfulness of it. It's just, oh, Jacques Jujard in the Louvre, see? This guy here, he'd been there five years. Although the Pitain government had worked hand in glove with the Nazi regime, leaving resistance to those who valued... France more highly than their own lives. Uh, we knew that there were individuals, unlike the vile Abel Bonard, who never stooped to the ignorant, uh, ign ignominious betrayal of their country. So there were a lot of, of people that uh, that really stood up to them. So they were hastily done. There's uh, Saint Michel. That is a, a fantastic situation. And I suppose there were art, and, and that was looted, of course. Everything was looted. Churches were bombed. They had to blow up some churches just to get the dang uh, snipers out of there. So... These guys were made officers, and they went to... A, a, a basic training. There's the author, Roramer, yeah, on the way to in uniform. So, well, there's one other woman in here. Okay.
Well, there's some pictures of the French people. There's Rose. So these people were de were dedicated to art, you know. Edith Standen. Well, there was one other woman. So, anyways, the Americans, Goering. Anyways, I could go on and on, but get the book like we did. We got ours from the Tucson, Pima County Public Library. Thanks for watching, and don't let this happen again. Because you know what Nazis are. It begins with the letter B.